Willkommen in Wien. Is that right? I think so. I think so. That is. Welcome to Vienna. It's going to be a jam packed day, and I can't wait to see all of it because it all looks beautiful. It's Vienna. We're in Vienna. It doesn't get prettier than this. Well, we missed the bus. We watched it go by. And now the next one isn't here for 13 more minutes. But the public transportation here in Austria has been very, very consistent. So 13 minutes, it'll be here. Or six minutes. Wait, why do you say six? Because it says six. Oh. <laughs> it runs every like seven every, minutes. See, that's what I'm saying, consistency. They got it. So masks are not required to walk around the city of Vienna as of now, but they do require them on public transportation. And as always, we're starting with a cup of coffee and a cup of coffee to us is always local. So it turns out we made a slight miscalculation because there are two places named the same thing. We went to Café Altwein when we were looking for Altwein Café. But I should have double checked, that's my fault. The company says it has two birthdays, one being when Altwine was founded in 1987 and the other being when the current owners purchased and moved to the current location in June of 2000. They have over 40 varieties of coffee and have a ton of great reviews online, so we figured we'd grab a cup to go and try it out. Oh, that's amazing. So they have two different types of coffee beans. One being <laughs> from Sicily, Italy, which is like rich. And then the modern is sweet and from El Salvador. I mean, if you're roasting your own beans or you're grinding your own beans, this is the place you want to go. After you get your cup of coffee, you can walk through the Nausch Market because it's right next door. The Nausch Market is a century old open air market and it's also Vienna's largest and most well-known market. There's about 120 stands and restaurants to choose from and it stretches over a mile. You can definitely find anything that you need here. The market had developed a slogan saying if the Nash Mark doesn't have it then you don't need it and it makes total sense why the locals feel this way. I love coming to these markets because I think it's a really unique way to observe the culture here. This is definitely because of its size one of the most unique we found in Europe. There's a lot of places today that we're going to visit but not go inside and that's partly due to budget restrictions and partly due to time restrictions. We've only got, you know, this afternoon here. So we wanted to go ahead and see as much as we could, even if that means that we didn't get to tour some of them. One thing that we're not going to go inside of today is the Imperial Palace of Hofburg. We walked through here a small bit yesterday and quickly realized that this is major part of Vienna's history. The Imperial Palace of Hofburg was home of the Habsburg dynasty uh, during the reign in like the 13th century all the way up until 1918. Since 1948, it's been repurposed to the primary residence and workplace of the President of Austria. This entire area has served as the documented seat of the national government, and the surrounding area has numerous government buildings, but none stand out quite like this one. There's a festival on May 8th that they're setting up for and it looks pretty pretty fun. I have no idea who's playing or what's well, going on. Because there's a stage? I mean, yeah, it looks like a party. Uh, the stage kind of obstructs the view of the statue in front of the palace, but I'd say that's probably one of the prettiest buildings that we've seen. One of them, Since yeah. we've been in, in Europe. It's got the Baroque style, which is a type of architecture that was very popular in the 18th century. What? How you feeling? Wired. That coffee, dude, man. Wow. Dude man, wow. Dude man, wow. <laughs> Dude man, wow. Going forward, anytime we describe anything that's like really crazy or strong, we're just going to be like, dude man, wow. Hannah has no idea what's in store for her in this garden. It is supposedly beautiful. So she's about to just lose her mind. Yep, there she goes to flowers. Now that it's finally spring in Europe, we decided that we had to walk through the Volksgarten. The Volksgarten is a public park within the inner ring of Vienna and has been exploding with color every single spring since it was finished being constructed back in 1823. It's home to various flowers, monuments, cafes, and provides such a nice outdoor experience. One thing I've noticed, and I don't know if it means anything, but there is a ton of purple flowers, specifically purple flowers throughout Vienna. And I want to know if that means something. So get down in the comments if you know. <laughs> I'm very curious. Another great thing about Vienna is everything's really close to each other. The city center 
is super, super compact and tight. So you can really walk from each spot easily. Uh, but if you don't want to walk, if your mobility is compromised, you can take the Ringstrasse, which is a ring that goes around the central part of the city. You can get a yellow tram that's like a sightseeing tour that's like more for tourists, or you could brave the public transportation here, which is fairly affordable, really reasonable relative to a lot of other European cities that we've been to. Well, this right here is City Hall, but unfortunately it looks like we're not gonna be able to get back there. This building's probably the building that I'm most familiar with. This is the seat of the local government, and it sort of reminds me of Real Casa de Corios in Madrid, mostly because of its important position within the city. This building's obviously beautiful to visit any time of the year, but it really shines during the holidays when the front of the town hall gets transformed to a Christmas market. I've been seeing pictures of this market my whole life, and it's normally the first thing that I think of when I think of the city of Vienna. Coming back here during Christmas time is probably something that we're gonna have to do in the future. So I didn't have Ferristol Passage on the itinerary today, but we just kind of stumbled upon it while we were walking to our next place. And it's beautiful. It's not as big as the one in Milan. There are a lot of these throughout Europe, and the one in Milan is the biggest, but it's still so ornate and so beautiful. We need a miracle. So let's cross our fingers that we can get in. We're trying to go to Cafe Central, which is extremely famous. Uh, there were no reservations outside of 8 a.m. this morning. We were never gonna make it here at 8 a.m. So we're gonna see if we can get in. The line seems to be moving a little bit quickly. I don't know if these people have reservations or not, but there's a little bit of hope. Cafe Central has been here since 1876, and it's been frequented by the likes of Sigmund Freud. But he wasn't the only prominent figure to come here. There was Leon Trotsky came here, um, Adolf Hitler came here, uh, Joseph Stalin came here. But that just goes to show how prominent this place was back in its heyday in the early 20th century. We're here because we hear that it's got excellent Viner melange, and we felt like there was no, no question we'd rather spend that money on really good food in a really beautiful cafe. Uh, Viennese style, because that's what they do here in Vienna. I feel like you're supposed to stir it, but maybe not. I love foam in my coffee, so this is right up my coffee. Oh yeah. I definitely don't need more coffee today, <laughs> but this is really good. That was a nice little snack. And we can say that we've been to Cafe Central. Next up is the most famous cathedral in the entire country of Austria. It's called St. Stephen's Cathedral, or Stephansdom. This cathedral is the most important religious building in Vienna and stands on the ruins of two earlier churches. St. Stephen's Cathedral, or Stephansdom, is the mother church of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Vienna and it's been in here since the 12th century. Entry to the cathedral is free, however, there are different access points where you'd have to like purchase tickets. You can get an all-inclusive ticket for 16 euros each that includes an audio tour, a guided tour of the catacombs, and entry to the North and South Towers. But we're going to try and do just the North Tower. We need cash, so we're running across the street to the Bank of Austria to withdraw some money. And then we're going to go back in there and we're going to go to the top of the tower. Uh, it doesn't take card. And it's only 6 euros each, but make sure if you're coming to the cathedral, stop and get cash. steps were not those fun. steps were not fun. I didn't even like those steps. We've tried to take public transit like our entire time here and we have literally walked up as the public transit is leaving so many times. <laughs> Wondering why we're taking so much transportation through the city, it's because A, Vienna is super accessible with their public transit, but B, we purchased a pass, it's a 48 hour pass. For both of us, it was like $29 or 28 euros. And it basically gives us unlimited access to the public transit for 48 hours, which is perfect because that's about how long we needed it. We're now at the Vienna State Opera. We booked a guided tour for two o'clock, so we're here on time, thankfully. Um, but it's so opulent. The pictures look stunning. So we figured if we were gonna pay to go inside and see a place, then this would probably be the place we'd wanna see. 
and it's perfect timing because it's starting to rain. <laughs> this opera house opened in 1869 and holds a little over 1,700 people with a little bit of room for standing areas as well. This opera house is one of the more prominent and famous in the world with the likes of Enrico Caruso and Luciano Pavarotti gracing the stage. The entrance is the only original part of the opera from the bombing in World War II. It took about 10 years to rebuild, but you can see different ballets, tragedies, and comedies here. September to June is the prime opera season with about 50 operas and 20 to 50 ballets depending on the season. Customizable subtitles are also available on the back of each seat. There's about 180,000 costumes needed for all of the different operas throughout the season. They're not stored here, but they do have underground tunnels connecting them to each of the costume storage rooms. Tickets for the Imperial Suite are around 200 to 300 euros per ticket. The Emperor's Tea Room is where he would sit during the intermissions, and champagne is not included, but you are able to rent this room for 500 euros, but you only get it for intermission, which is approximately 20 minutes. Tonight at the opera, they're playing Mozart's play Figaro. We tried to get tickets, but there's one available for 250 euros. So it's safe to say that we will not be going. But if you are interested in going and want the standing room tickets, they're about 10 euros each, and you have to wait outside two hours before showtime. It seemed like we kind of ran out of the opera and got on the subway really fast, just because we did. We hopped on the U4 line that to take us to uh, Shunbrun Palace. I don't know if that's the correct way of pronouncing it. It's probably completely wrong, but it closes at five and it's currently three o'clock. So we really wanted to get down here, not because we want to go in, but be because it's a little bit out of our price range, but mostly because we wanted to go and see the gardens. This is the main summer residence for the Habsburg rulers and has over 1400 rooms. This is the biggest palace in Austria and attracts well over 4 million visitors a year. This palace has played many roles through its time and it served as a meeting point of many different occupations and regimes in the last few hundred years. What? I don't even know which one I want to go down first. This is amazing. It is beautiful out here. Yeah. It's raining a little bit more than we like, so we haven't been able to use the camera as much, but we're going to head back to the apartment because we're going to a very special place for dinner tonight and we got to get ready. See you in two seconds. Dinner time! We're going to a place called Grickenbossel, which is way down in the center of Vienna. So we have to walk about eight minutes to the train, to like the tram, and then take the tram all the way down to the center of town. So it's gonna be like a 35 minute journey. Now that we've had some great local coffee, walked through gardens, cathedrals, seen beautiful buildings, it's definitely time for dinner. <laughs> We'd seen some high ratings for a restaurant in v central Vienna called Greek and Basel, so we made a reservation for tonight and Trey is on a mission to try Wiener Schnitzel for the first time. This restaurant is dubbed the oldest inn in town and was enjoyed by Mark Twain, Beethoven, Mozart, Pavarotti, and even Johnny Cash. Greek and Basel has been serving people for over 550 years, so if there's ever a place in Vienna to go get local food it's definitely this place <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm excited for the Wiener Schnitzel something it's country fried steak wiener schnitzel is country fried steak back home without the gravy i guess but that means it's delicious <laughs> okay not bad look at the height it's very thin yeah it is so the salad i think is baby arugula is that baby arugula okay I clearly don't eat salad all the time, but it's delicious. It's got like potatoes at the bottom. We'll try. We're gonna battle through the rest of this, and we'll see you in Bratislava. Whoops! Yeah, stop and get cash. <laughs> I just wanted to remind you for when you're editing. This might sound so goofy, but the fence, even the fence here, is just 
so regal and nice. Someone's in trouble. Actually, we're not gonna, there's a spider on the camera. Oh no, do you see him? Yeah. Oh, smack him. Ow, ow, not on my hand though. No. Is he still there? He's probably on me. Yep. <laughs> there's it. Yeah. <gasps> she got hops. Oh no. <laughs> I try to do the dramatic under the chin shots, but I don't try to do it ironically. I actually think it's a cool shot. And every time I do it, Hannah's just like, laughing or making a double chin. <laughs> the sunburn <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> I feel like we can make this place work. I feel like yeah. we can live there. Oh yeah. We were going to get some dinner. Coffee is still hitting me. Dinner time, don't you know? <laughs>